before we talk about the film, I know you have an extensive uh, filmmaking background. Uh, you've not only produced documentary, but also narrative work. Um, so take us back to how your interest in film developed. I know you grew up in Chile and then went on to study film in Argentina. So um, start off by talking a bit about your your path uh, toward a filmmaking career. Well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. It's, it's great to, to talk to each other after, after a while. I grew up in Chile in the 80s, still under the dictatorship. So I always say to people that the 80s in Chile is the equivalent of the 70s in the US because we were consuming all the pop culture from the US, right? Dab to Spanish, recycle, cheap to buy, right? On TV, so my, my world was a lot about watching films, you know, I remember vividly the first time I watched Star Wars on TV on, on 1986 or something like that, you know, so I was very, very motivated by, by, by these things going on on TV. So my world was all about a fantasy world, heavily fed by my dad, you know, that, that he was a big, big sponsor of all the American culture, Westerns, you know, I grew up watching Westerns and Italian films. And then when I was 12, I had this defining moment that we all have at some point in our lives that I picked up a camera for the first time. You know, it was a, a high edge Sony Handycam. And I got a job that was to film my, my grandparents' uh, 50 years anniversary. You know, and it was only a viewfinder, not flip screen in those years. So in black and white. And just seeing the world through a little thing changed me. And I was 11 or 12 years old, something along those lines. And that was the moment that I decided, okay, I got to be able to make a job out of this. I have to be able to leave, you know, and this is my thing, right? And I remember too, those old Sony uh, cameras. Fast. We've come a long way too with, uh, with technology. And so, so fast forward now from Star Wars uh, to more recent times and uh, here in, in DC. So the new film, We Will Stay, it took you to Tangier Island, um, small crabbing community in the Chesapeake Bay. Um, first off, Franco, describe the island itself and talk a little too about some of the issues uh, surrounding sea level rise there. Um, and then also talk about how you were drawn to the community and, and what really uh, sparked uh, the interest in this project. Well, I do have a close relationship with, with the sea, with, with the ocean. In this case, Tangier is, is, is a bay, right? It's, it's an estuary, technically speaking, right? It's a big lake connected to the ocean. But I grew up around the, the, the ocean because I'm from Chile, and Chile is a very narrow country that you are either in the mountains or in the ocean, right? So, so sea level rising is, is, is something that is being tackled in Chile from since I can remember stuff. We all talk about it. Why? Because we have glaciers in the south, you know, that they are melting, and I've seen them throughout the years. And at some point, our cities might be in danger, right? So it was some. I, I was wired already to to think about it before the whole narrative about climate change. You know, eighties. You know, I, I knew that stuff. You know, because it's part of who we are. So silver rising is, I think, is probably the biggest threat that we can have as as humanity. You know, nowadays. You know. Uh, some won't be agreeing with me, but that's my point of view, and of course, and, and, and there are so many issues, but that's probably one of the main ones, right? So um, having the same problem, you know, in a community so close to me, it gave me an opportunity to see, okay, let's explore this in a in not the macro way. The macro way is climate change, how this is changing communities all over the world, right? That's a fact, you know, but this community, when it start, the press started labeling as the first climate change refugees ever, it made an impact on my thinking of because one thing, I don't know if this is really accurate. Second, I want to experience it and maybe get some documentation about what's going on there. But I needed to experience that by myself, essentially. We need to see what's going on here. So the point of view of, of TV or, or, or press is, is very steady. You know, They don't go too deep and stuff. So it's, it's a good informational piece, right? So I want to do something different, you know, and, and that community got a lot of backlash because they were supporting Trump, right? President Trump got high numbers there and, and he was just pulling off from the, from the Paris Accord, right? And not believing climate change. So you still have these people that 
really loves him, right? Supports him a lot, give him very high numbers, and they have been impacted by this, right? So this like a this connection that creates conflict that from a filmmaker is what we need, right? To to get stories and, and intertwine and all that stuff, right? So all those ingredients made me think, okay, we have something going on here, but let's go there and see who they are, you know. And of course, with a very respectful point of view, you know, and I read stuff uh, that were pretty awful about this place, you know, because they were supporting Trump. Things such as, I hope they sink, you know, things that, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't help the, the community, you know, the whole country to have the, that, like, aversion against the community that happens to think different than you. But I needed to see how isolated they are. So I went there and with one mission exactly, you know, I needed to, to find someone to be the driver of the story. You know, and I do like cross-generational stuff a lot. I think they provide many layers for the audience. So I got acquainted with Cameron. Cameron was leaving the island and becoming the, his freshman year at Wesleyan College in, West Virginia, in Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach, you know. So he was a perfect guy, and we speak the same language. He's a Cameron guy. You know, he's, he's a, a, a very accomplished photographer, very talented. He's a, he's a genius, you know. And I got very impressed by his work documenting the island. You know, the work of the crabman, the work of the people there. I mean, you name it. The, the, the fauna, the flora, everything through the seasons. You know, amazing stuff. So I said, okay, this guy is, wow, he gets this stuff, right? So when I meet him, and we took probably a year a lot of back and forth, you know, trying to find the right day. There was like a lot of stuff. I tried to pitch the idea to to big outlets and, and, and things like that, and I didn't succeed at them. You know, so I didn't get derailed. I just said, okay, I'll do it myself. Talk about, you know, your perception of the future of, of Tangier Island and also any any updates, because I know it has been in the news recently. Yeah, I'm, I'm optimistic about Tangier Island. You know, there's some updates as in, as in May, you know, they are starting to build one wall so the, this like budgets already approved for certain areas you know so i think that all this stuff you know and the, the infamous call that trump did to the mayor right you know that promise that he made that the that, that tenure will be 100 years more right and people like me doing doing doing, doing things about the uh, exposing the island uh, the tv doing, doing doing its part cameron going out and just advocating for the island or this platform, you know, I think that that's that's helpful, you know, and and the place can be safe. The the person that wrote the main Marine uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers study, right, reached out to me after the film, you know, out of the blue. The guy that inspired me as well, saw the film and left left a comment there, and and, and then we talk on the side, and yes, I learned that is that is actually easier to to save them, and I think they will be safe. I think that the, they will be safe, you know, um, but the main issue with the island is like the youngsters are leaving the island and they have no interest in coming back, right? So that's why Cameron is special, right? So, and that's happening in every single place, you know, the, the youngsters are going to more exciting places, right? But I think they will be safe and, and this uh, a team of very strong, committed people inside the island that there are not many but i think they can just do the trick you know again the film is we will stay and you can find that at dceff.org thanks franco thank you. thank you for everything and hope to see you soon okay you as well thank you